They pinch me, they bite me for everywhere where I did, for a Nigeria where we did. So now everywhere they touch me from my head to my breast to my leg to my bum bum to my eyes to my nose. Now everywhere they touch person. Nobody for this Lagos where they see no touch except maybe money launderers and politicians. Return it. Return it. All along, all along, pay your It is thief. It is thief free. It is a thief. You are a thief. You are a fraud. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Conversations with Bimmy. Conversations with why is it shaking? No, don't shake. Please don't shake. No, 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 don't shake. Long time no conversations, guys. It's been a hot minute since I did conversations. It's been a minute, and um, yeah, I'm back again today. And today we're going to be discussing we we as Nigerians say now we they do ourselves. <laughs> now we they do ourselves. By the way, you guys know this is conversation, so I'm parked on the road. So you might be hearing cars, onks, okada, motorcycles buses brt everything just doing what it feels like but yeah that's what conversations is about like i said today you guys i'm going to be talking about win as nigerians say now we did do ourselves so basically this is this has stemmed from a personal experience i just had recently and i was like you know what i need to come and share with you guys and <laughs> let you guys know and also get your input on um, what you guys think about this so if you're new to my channel conversations is something i basically started is a series i started where i talk about the daily lives of the average nigerian like things that go on daily in our lives that i know that we can all relate to whether you are in the diaspora you once lived here you live here Currently, you never you don't live here anymore all that stuff and there are different episodes that are already created so you should go and watch it to catch up and know what all of this is about so if you're interested in knowing what's this thing that i want to talk about today saying that nigerians now we did do ourselves just keep watching so the first thing i want to talk about is uh, money basically um so what happened something that happened to me a couple of weeks ago i was trying to pay some salaries and i was making transfer on my phone and i wasn't concentrating and so i mistakenly sent somebody's salary to another person like to you know how on your mobile banking app you save some people's account numbers so i already had some account numbers saved already right so there were two names that looked alike and i just assumed i just once i just saw angela i just thought that you know it's the angela i'm supposed to send money to and apparently it was an angela that i probably bought something from a long time ago because i do not even remember who the person is so i just clicked on it and he said oh am i sure i want to send to the person and i said yes and i sent it it was only when i went back to my excel sheet and i saw that ha it's not the right person you know so i called up customer service and i said i just sent money to the wrong person what do i do about it and then they told me that i had to go to the um a, a branch office and fill out something called an indemnity form so i packed up all my things i ran to the branch office filled out the indemnity form and i was heading home only for me to be heading home on my way home i discovered that the indemnity for my field i made a mistake again and filled the right angela's account number as the account number that i sent money to so you guys double wahala so the next morning i woke up i went to another branch of gtb that's the bank by the way and then i explained the situation to them and they said oh i just need to fill out another indemnity form which i did and i i specifically asked the lady i was like does this mean that the the person's account i put yesterday hope nothing is going to happen to the person's account and she said oh yeah that this new form that i filled because i went with my husband and she told us that this new form that i filled will override the previous form that i filled and so there will be nothing wrong with that person's account and because i was just shaking like ha hey god i beg oh, i don't want them to put somebody's account on hold and the person really needs the money and it was about to be around public holiday period so i needed them really to fix the person's account tell me why the next day the person calls me up and the person is like um there's a hold on my account and they said that you authorized it i was like i shall explain that you know this was what happened and all that stuff and all that stuff and i told her to go to the bank and thank god it was she was also using gt she went to the bank and then they said oh that i shouldn't i wasn't even supposed to fill out an indemnity form i was supposed to just write a letter stating that this was what happened and i need my money back and all that stuff that was all i had to do meanwhile all these other customer service and all these other branches that told me that i should fill out something called an indemnity form which i did long story short that was resolved um the, the lady's account was put back on as they removed um, the hold on the lady's account and she was able to access her funds now where i'm going with this actually is that i put it up on my instagram stories that you know this was what happened and i just hope i can get my money back from the person i mistakenly sent money to because i just kept imagining 
that what if the person tells the bank that we had a transaction and I, and I sent the money to the person so and the person doesn't give the bank back my money what then happens and then you know people started telling me on social media on instagram people started telling me on instagram their experiences which is why i am here today and somebody somebody's in particular story stood out to me she said she mistakenly sent one million to somebody and she actually you know went to the bank took up the case in the bank the bank did their investigation and found out that you know she did mistakenly send money into somebody's account okay now they contacted the person send the money back to the person this person refused to send the money back for you people i'm like money that is not your own your own this person did not send the money back so i asked her how the matter was resolved and she told me that it had to be it eventually was a court case she had to take the case to court it wasn't even the bank that took the case to court she had to take the case to court and they had to summon the person and ask the person to pay back the money i'm like so if if it was a smaller amount because obviously nobody's going to let go of one million in this life but if it was a smaller amount which somebody also shared their experience with me that he, uh, she mistakenly sent ten thousand to somebody and the person refused to send the money back so i was like that money just went like that me my money wasn't so much and it was much at the same time it was forty thousand but i wasn't i wasn't about to let go of the money thankfully it's been rectified my money has been sent back to me it took about a week even though the bank had said it would take a two weeks and above but it took me about a week and i got my money back and i'm very thankful for that but what i'm trying to say is why are nigerians so why are you a thief somebody mistakenly sent money to your account if it was a case that you know maybe they didn't contact you to tell you anything we might even understand but me i'm not going to spend that kind of money but then they've contacted you and they've established that it was a mistake send the person's money back you refuse to send it back like they take the lady with the 10k now that money just went like you comfortably just sat down in your house and you're chopping another person's money just like that you don't you don't know what kind of causes you are putting on your head you don't know what kind of problems you are bringing on your head by doing that you're just chopping another person's money you guys that is why i said nigerians now we they do ourselves so, if you've seen my vlog or my day in the life vlog yes i was talking about how uh, our light was acting somehow our electricity was acting somehow and how we just kept having to turn on the gen every time now let me briefly explain what happened what had happened was like phcn came and cut our light on january Nepa on January, they cut our light from the pole. Now, why did they cut our light? On upon investigation, we found out that we had it. We had a neighbor. Uh, they just moved out about a month or two ago, and um, the PHCN just found out that for the past ten to twelve months, those people, their flat, they were connected illegally to the pole. So they had prepaid meter, but they just ne they never paid prepaid meter. They never got estimated billing. They never paid for electricity. They were just getting light directly from the source. Now, these people have moved out. PHCN was now telling us and the landlord that we should go and find these people to pay the money back. These people were owing about 570,000 naira. Yes, that we should go and find them to pay the money back. We just moved in and we're like, why are we suffering for something that we do not know about that's one so when we're now talking to the landlord when my husband was talking to the landlady about um the whole situation the landlady was like where is she going to get these people from that do you know that um the people actually left out uh, that house owing about seven months of our strength about seven to nine months of our strength unpaid and i just think it's actually unfair i understand trust me i totally understand the situation of the country like you cannot understand as much as me because if they pinch me they bite me for everywhere where i did for nigeria where we did so now everywhere they touch me from my head to my breast to my leg to my bum bum to my eyes to my nose that everywhere they touch person nobody for this lagos where they see no touch except maybe money launderers and politicians it touch everybody everywhere so i understand i totally understand that money is not forthcoming like before guys i had to switch position because the sun has already moved to this direction anyways so i totally understand that um money is not forthcoming anymore and I, I totally get it trust me i am one of those that get it but then how do you first of all bypass electricity illegally and this is me saying to you now if you're in nigeria and you're watching this video and you are one of those that do that that is just rubbish if you have bypassed electricity and you don't collect estimated billing you do not pay um for your prepaid meter you don't buy money on your card and you're just using electricity you are a fraud you are nothing but a fraud and i'm telling you today you're a fraud and you should not you should not under any circumstances you're a child of god like that is just stealing is stealing you're a child of god you should not be stealing so fix up
Mm -hmm. So why would you fraudulently be collecting electricity? Then you are owing house rent and you left the house without paying a dime out of that house rent. That is just so unfair immediately things got tough and you couldn't pay or maybe you come up with some type of payment plan or something you don't just leave because the landlady was asking where is she supposed to get all this money from now now PHN is saying they have to pay about 500 and something thousand naira. where exactly in god's name is she supposed to get 500 thousand plus from to pay <sighs> you guys when i say now nah, we they do ourselves so now the landlady has all this money to pay um we that we are tenants in the house we are suffering it even though we we have sorted ourselves out in a way we have um we had to pay uh, phcn and that was the only thing they could have done for us so they had to um, disconnect our electricity from the general main source and then connected our own meter directly to the pole so whenever they cut electricity in our house it doesn't affect us because we we are now on our own but we still had a couple of days that we were you guys it was not even funny that we were left without electricity and water and it was in fact at the time we had to go do laundry in my mom's house it was that bad so um yeah and it affected all of us and that's why i said nigerians now we they do ourselves now we they do each other like can we just look at how we had to suffer for something we did not know about look at how the landlady now has to pay for well i i, I heard now that she has paid about 70 percent of the money but you know she just has to cough up cough out the money of something she knew nothing absolutely nothing about now remember the video where i was talking about renting accommodation and renting houses to people in lagos imagine if these people that did this thing they were of a particular tribe or of a particular church and then the landlady now decides and says listen i don't want anybody from this tribe living in my house again i don't want um anybody from this particular organization or church living in my house again or i don't want a businessman in my house or i don't want a you, you know some, th these are the things that stems and results into things like this that happen so let's fix up let's do better let's stop doing ourselves in this country because it's not going to affect the leaders it's not going to affect the politicians it's not going to affect the the people that are chopping money in this country it is me and you that the thing is going to affect we had to go about three four five days without electricity buying a fuel in our generator that we did not have to be doing like sleeping without light we had to be using our generator to pump water like it was just all a mess at some point in time our generator was tired the thing packed up we had to fix it and that that, all, that cost all of us like all of us in the compound had to pay for some people's misbehavior now where are we supposed to find those kind of people there's no way for anybody to find them that's the nigeria that we live in so basically the whole story that i'm trying to say and tell you people in these conversations with bimi is that we need to learn to fix up we need to learn to stop doing ourselves in this country we need to learn to embrace ourselves as brothers and sisters and stop doing ourselves because look at the per person that somebody mistakenly transferred money to you decided not to send the money back you just chopped the money like that so that, that's just wickedness now then you that you decided to run with light uh, payment run with house rent just like that and i know there are so many stories like this in lagos so i'm sure you people can relate <laughs> you've heard several stories like this and if you're one of those that does this thing somebody mistakenly sent money to you and the bank has contacted you that you should return that money back return it return it it is thief it is thief free it is a thief you're a thief you're a fraud return the person's money one if you're one of those that are collecting lights illegally stop it this is for me be free from me today rest in jesus name if you're one of those that know you to pay house rent you do one year in this place you pack you move to another place one day nemesis will catch up with you <laughs> it will catch up <laughs> with you thank you guys so much for watching these conversations with bimi the light is already going down so i need to bounce out of this place skedaddle out of this place i hope you guys enjoyed this particular episode see you guys in the next one if you have um um, if you have topics that you guys want me to talk about i've always said it leave it in the comment section down below if you have questions for me leave it in the comment section down below like this video share this video with everybody that you know and i will definitely see you guys in my next one bye guys